Today, I want to talk plainly about something that throughout my career I have seen cause trouble time and time again, which is folks who are shopping around when getting a reverse mortgage. So we are going to be discussing the pros and cons of shopping around, as well as what you want to look out for if you do shop around. And you may be asking yourself, well, well Taryn, isn't it always a good idea to shop around for any mortgage? And my honest answer to that is no, it isn't always a good idea. Because when it comes to reverse mortgages, there are things that you need to be cognizant of when doing so. And when not cognizant of said things, shopping around or put another way, receiving all kinds of numbers from multiple companies when you aren't even sure what all the numbers from one to the next mean or how to interpret them can not only further muddy the already muddied waters of this loan for you, but also leaves you more vulnerable to falling prey to the salesiest of salesmen that will tell you whatever it is you want to hear in order to get your business. So stick around for a while as we go through this, because I promise the information we're going to go over in this video will help you immensely as you navigate through your reverse mortgage journey. Hey everyone, Taryn Proctor here, founder of Retirement Home Equity Advisors. We are a mortgage brokerage that specializes exclusively in reverse mortgage financing. If you are a first time viewer of my content, welcome. I create videos just like this about once a week to help educate those who are wanting to learn more about reverse mortgage financing. This is in an effort to help you make the most well-informed decisions about this complex financial product. Whether that be helping you determine if it may be a good fit for you or not, or if you determine it is a good fit, helping educate you on everything that comes after that. So if you enjoyed today's video and want to learn more, hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to my channel. As well, if you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and hit the notification bell as well. I also wanted to mention that subscribing to the channel is totally free. There are no strings attached to subscribing. One of our viewers actually pointed out to me that some folks may think there's a fee or a catch of some sort. So rest assured, there is no cost or catch to subscribing. Again, it's free and doesn't require you give us any of your personal information or anything like that. So now let's get back to the topic of the day shopping around for a reverse mortgage. And first, let me just clarify, I don't believe shopping around and comparing quotes is an inherently bad thing. This video is not telling you to never shop around. What this video is making you aware of are the major complications and downsides that can arise from shopping around and making sure you are informed about these things so that you are better able to navigate yourself through that if you choose to. Okay, for starters, the first thing you should ask yourself when you begin shopping around is what am I shopping around for? What is the ultimate goal I'm trying to accomplish by shopping around? Is it to get the best deal? Is it to find the most experienced loan officer? Is it finding someone you can trust? And let's be real here, for many people, they are wanting the best deal they can get, right? So we're gonna start there. Now, when it comes to a reverse mortgage, there are so many different ways your loan can be structured. So as a consumer, the question then is, what is the best deal for me? Is it the lowest interest rate? Is it the lowest closing costs? Is it the best combination of the two? And you may think this is an easy question to answer, but the reality is what may be the best deal for you may not be the best deal for the next person, depending on the particular situation. For example, if you are a 62 year old homeowner who is looking to get a reverse mortgage to help you prepare for and sustain you throughout your retirement, while at the same time, preserving the equity in your home for any heirs, more than likely you are going to want the absolute lowest interest rate possible 
despite closing costs. And that's because it's assumed you will be in the loan for quite some time and this particular structure will save you the most on interest and equity in the long run. Whereas a 90 year old homeowner who may be looking to get a reverse mortgage to help pay for end of life care at home may have more of a focus on the lowest closing cost options despite the interest rate. Because unfortunately, they may not be in the loan long enough to recoup additional or more closing costs via a lower interest rate over the long run. Now, here's a quick story for you. I had a client call in not too long ago who found me through this channel, called me up wanting to learn more about reverse mortgages. Then naturally, I put together a proposal for, for him and we went over multiple scenarios based on his situation. Well, after that, his son had advised that he may want to check in with another company to see if he could get a better deal. Which, by the way, I am never concerned when a client wants to compare my numbers to another company's numbers. I overwhelmingly and consistently outperform my competition um, when comparing apples to apples. But the thing is, most often, it isn't apples to apples comparisons. Let me explain. So this particular client got a proposal from another company, and then I didn't hear back from him for a while after that. Turned out he received what he thought was a better deal from this other company, and then began the actual transaction with them without discussing it with me. So he began the process with this other company, and it wasn't until an alarming issue popped up he didn't feel was right, that he then contacted me to make sure what he was being told was correct, which tells you he trusted me to tell him the truth about the situation and felt more comfortable with my expertise in knowing whether the situation was appropriate or not, but he still went with this other company because he thought their numbers were better. Now granted, what he was being told was correct, but luckily this is what prompted him to finally call me back because I then learned what he thought was a better deal was actually going to wind up costing him tens of thousands of dollars more throughout the life of his loan than what I had proposed. And what they did was they structured his loan where he would have a line of credit, but they told him that if he wanted the low rate they were offering, which was lower than what I had offered, that he would have to pull out all of the money that was available to him at closing. Whereas the scenario I put together for him did not have him pulling any money out at closing uh, because he didn't need it. And then secondly, they estimated his home value much higher than was to be expected from an actual appraisal. Both of these things are tactics in an effort to make things look better when they actually are not. Because although they were offering a marginally lower interest rate, when you pull money out of a reverse mortgage line of credit immediately, that money then begins to incur interest immediately. And put simply as an example, what is better over the course of time? Being charged 5% interest on a $250,000 loan balance or being charged 5.25% interest on a $100,000 loan balance. The higher rate in this case makes more sense for someone who does not need a large sum of money up front. And what I showed him once he finally contacted me back was that if he did in fact need that money, I could actually offer him a lower rate than the other company. But as he saw when we crunched the numbers, it would cost him way more in the long run. So it wasn't that the other company was offering a better deal. They just simply structured it in such a way that looked better up front, but again, in the long run would cost the client way more. Needless to say, this particular client came back to work with us and uh, we actually just recently closed his loan. Now, he is just one of many people this happens to. He thought he was getting a better deal, but didn't understand the long-term implications of how his loan was being structured. So moral of the story is looks can be deceiving. If rate and fees are your number one priority, you need to make sure you understand the full implications of 
how your loan is being structured and what those rates and fees mean short term and long term. And let's also talk about the idea that rates and fees are the only priority when shopping around. Because are they or should they be? Let's break this concept down a bit more in detail. Now, just because a broker or lender has competitive rates and fees doesn't mean they will be the absolute bottom of the barrel 100% of the time. Nor does it mean you couldn't call 100 different brokers or lenders to see if there were companies out there willing to slightly undercut what another one was offering. But then what? If rates and fees are the only priority for you, who do you wind up working with then? What kind of company or service will you get from said company who is essentially working for less than anyone else was willing to? And does that not matter? Because if you've seen any of my videos, you know the importance of who you choose to work with when it comes to this loan. And if you haven't seen any of those videos, I'll post a link to those in the description below. You'll definitely want to take a look. But that is a big deal. This isn't some random refinance transaction of a mortgage you've done many times over throughout your life. For most reverse mortgage borrowers, this is the biggest financial decision and transaction they will make for the rest of their lives. And it absolutely matters who you wind up working with to ensure this financial tool is structured properly for you and that the process is as smooth as possible and that you are as informed as possible. So with that said, are rates and fees a priority? Of course they are. They just shouldn't be the only priority. If you find someone you trust and are confident that their expertise is sufficient to not only educate you properly, but to structure your loan properly, and they have the capacity to get you to closing as smoothly as possible, that is probably someone you want to be working with. Now, lastly, for those of you planning on looking at different proposals from different companies, I just want to leave you with a few tips and pieces of advice so that you don't get bamboozled and to help make things a bit more simple for you. So number one, make sure you are comparing apples to apples, meaning if one company is estimating your home value at 100,000, ensure the next company does as well. Same goes for your mortgage payoff if you have one. If you tell one company your mortgage balance is $100,000 and the next company 95,000, now we are not comparing apples to apples. Lastly, on this tip, make sure you are receiving proposals within the same interest rate week. What I mean by that is interest rates and loan amounts get updated every Tuesday. And so if you get a proposal from a company on Monday, it's very possible the next day you could get a proposal from another company that is actually better, but looks worse because they're going off of the most recent updated rates for the week. So interest rate weeks run from Tuesday to Monday. So you'll want to keep that in mind and try to get proposals within the same week. Now, tip number two, check out my channel if you haven't already and watch what you can. The more educated you are about this product, the better it will be and the less likely it is that there will be any miscommunications or misunderstandings about what is what. Number three, don't get sold. Now, I don't mean this in terms of being scammed or anything like that. I think with how the laws and regulations are nowadays, actual illegal activity or people maliciously trying to deceive you are very few and far between. What I mean by this is there are a slew of companies out there who purposefully train their employees to sell you the dream. They put together a proposal that is literally the absolute best case scenario and answer any questions you ask based on absolute best case scenarios. And many times that winds up working out with folks being very disappointed. You can usually point these salesmen out because they typically talk in terms of absolutes when reverse mortgage transactions are anything but. 
Whereas someone who isn't trying to sell you is going to be a bit more vague and conservative about things. For instance, the salesman says, we can close your loan in 21 days. Whereas someone who is not trying to sell you is saying something more like, on average, reverse mortgage transactions last anywhere from 30 to 45 days. Salesmen say, I know the underwriter and I know I can get them to waive this requirement for you. Non-salesmen say, based on my experience and working with reverse mortgage guidelines for many years, I believe this is something we can have waived, but there is never a guarantee. Hopefully you see what I mean here. And that is it for today, folks. I hope you have learned something valuable from today's video. And if you did, again, go ahead and check out my channel. Subscribe and peruse all of the educational content I have over there. And if you have any questions about today's topic or reverse mortgages in general, please don't hesitate to give me a call anytime. You can reach me at 888-982-0475. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care.